Welcome to Street Stoics, the podcast where we discuss Stoicism, the ancient philosophy of living a good life. I'm your host, Bryce, and I'm joined by my co-host, Benny. We're here to help you apply Stoic wisdom to your everyday life, no matter what obstacles you're facing, whether it be work stress, relationship issues, or just the general ups and downs of life. Stoicism has something to offer us all. Hey, 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 another Stoic podcast day. How's it going, Benny? Yeah, it's going well. It's going well, uh, uh, Bryce. I'm just, uh, you know, uh, applying a little bit of moderation to this episode today, but uh, oh. how's it going? Wow, being moderate. Boy, that doesn't sound fun at all. I guess what we're talking about, the list says we're talking about temperance or stoic temperance, right? Very interesting one. It's one of the four cardinal virtues, and I think it's a little bit different from the other three, and we'll talk about that. But uh, to get it kicked off, Benny, when I say the word temperance what's what's your feeling about that what's your standard uh, definition and interpretation of that word i think that's a good question and uh, and we just we spoke about this before and having the right definition is important right to know exactly what the word being that how we should apply it and and especially for for someone you know who, who's not a native english speaker the word temperance you know some of, some of these words you got to really think about right and maybe even for you know you can fill that in as a native speaker um, yourself that it's a uh, it can get quite tricky. So when when we talk about temperance, um, I think about moderation. I think about self control. I, I think about like uh, Aristotle's golden mean, right? Where we have uh, excess on one side, you know, uh, uh, lack on the other side, and in the middle we are just right, right? We have just that right balance of of of, of applying something to our life or doing something, certain actions. You know, a lot of the times we think about food or. or um, um, activities that we do, we, we can look at it in sports. People can go overboard with the sports and might get injured, or you know, we were. But when I think about temperance, it's that that balance, right? It's right there in the middle, and I, I and I think that that's why um, when we look about it, uh, when we talk about it a little bit later, how it fits with the virtues, I think you know it is right there at the center, um, and 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 we will expand on this a little bit later. For me, temperance is is the virtue on which I have to work the most because I struggle with it in certain areas, but we'll touch on that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of my starting um, definition of temperance, right? It's that self-control, it's that being in balance and doing things in the right amount. Um, but uh, what is your take on it? Yeah, pretty similar. I mean, you know, look at the standard, you know, Webster definition of that word. You get things like, you know, abstinence, right? Or moderation, self-restraint. I like the word balance. And yeah, it, it can really, it can mean a lot of different things, but I always apply whenever people are talking about temperance or self-restraint, I always feel a little bit down, right? I think it's because it feels like it's no fun, right? And so, you know, when you have the four cardinal virtues on stoicism, you got courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom, right? The courage, justice, and wisdom, there's a, there's a sexiness to it. There's an energy to it. It's, there's, there's power in it, you know? When we think about temperance, it's like, ah, you know, it's like I got I got to turn something down. I, I can't have as much fun. Right. So like to me, that's that's kind of the first impression. I don't know if you get that type of impression when you think about it. Yeah. So it, it's again, that balance is something I like to key on. And in a stoic sense, right, we'll start to, to creep into that because I don't think we need to go into too much depth about what the word means. Pretty straightforward is you know it's one of the as a virtue right especially as a cardinal virtue you know stoics believe like you know temperance is key to attaining inner peace and tranquility you know that excess is right uh not just in pleasure but in pain uh anything right there needs to be some sort of equilibrium and when you think about stoics it's about self-mastery and control right it's something we talk about restraint right I, I think of other words here we go like discipline right and these don't feel like, again, sexy words or, or things that happen naturally. It's, but I think that's exactly it, right? It's stoicism's, this framework, it's meant to give us a kind of an outline of the way that we can approach life. And without balance, we're in trouble. I think balance is key to healthy living. And it's not, this isn't just a stoic thought. This is, uh, you, you, you find this in all other types of philosophies and you know, common philosophy, common philosophy, common wisdom, all these types of things. It, it's so incredibly important. We have juggling so many things in our life, right? 
that there has to be some sort of balance. And I think when I think of restraint as well, as the there's positives to that, right? And I, I think I'm healthier if I have rest, uh, some sort of balance or restraint. Uh, I'm again, I'm in control. Uh, excesses are usually dangerous, right? When we think of things like that. So at least on the surface, really basic understanding of what the word means, but then how do we apply it to life, right? And we're bringing it into a stoic context. And you can see right away uh, how important temperance is. Yeah, I was just a bit surprised. You know, are you calling stoicism not fun? Are you calling, you know, are you are you calling stoicism unsexy? What, well, what's going on? You know, well, I mean, when, you're, oh, when the core of it has to do with restraint and and discipline and self-mastery, all those things seem like a punishment rather than something positive. But we all know, right, if you if you start to lean into those things, it can be very powerful and you get a lot of other value out of it. Yeah, no, exactly that. And, and, and you know, when we look at the, what you were talking about, right, it isn't really the, the sexiest thing to talk about. And I think if for, for many reasons, that's why true sto stoicism is sometimes difficult to sell. Right? It's not an easy sell, and then we, we, we come to something as temperance or moderation because people want to you know, live it up, have a, have a great time. You know? And I've, I've lived that life as well uh, before, uh, well, uh, a few years ago or uh, many years ago. Um, but when I look at it, uh, and when I looked at, for example, a day after the party, right? you have a great party, and, and then maybe the next week another one, and the day after you wake up, and it's always a little bit more difficult. And when you mentioned that fun, you know, that's very temporarily, that's very short-term fun. But after, you know, maybe the day after, and I've looked back at many of those nights or in days where I just like, hey, let's let's live it up. And I didn't see it as much as fun, right? Because you have, you know, a different um, a look at life, uh, perhaps because of alcohol, you, you see things in a different, through a different lens. But that's the short-term focus. But when I think about uh, something as temperance or self-control, right? Maybe that's a, that's a better word to use as well. That's the long-term fun. Then I can really start to enjoy life. And as you mentioned, it's that e e inner peace that we're looking for. Um, and that inner peace is not something that we're going to find in the short term. It's something we're going to find from today to tomorrow, right? We might, might find a little, little instances, but the more we practice this moderation, the self-control, the longer those stints are going to be, the longer we feel that we can um, live our lives with, with, with the peace and, and the control that we need to have, especially if we know our weaknesses, right? And if we know those weaknesses. So in that sense, I think um, it isn't something that, that on the, in the short term sounds great fun, but if you really apply it and, and stay disciplined um, and it becomes your habits, right? I think that that is one of the key aspects as well when we try to apply it. Because if we do it consistently, then these disciplines or this, this self-control, this self-mastery becomes a habit. And suddenly it doesn't become a task anymore. At one point, it just becomes your life. Um, I've experienced that in, in, in many different aspects myself. But at one point, you just that becomes the challenge, right? That becomes the, uh, the fun, if you will. And then you can, and then you look at life differently. And then you can really appreciate all the other things that's happening. And you find more great joy. And... A lot of people are chasing that happiness, that fun, but again, that short term. But if we look for joy, if we look for contentment, that is the long term. And if we do that, then we can build on it. We can make sure that we can grow as a person. We can even grow from you know the outside if we're if we're building a, a you know our, our careers or whatever. We can make sure that that's more stable. You know, relationships, all of those things, because if we have that self control, we have more confidence in ourselves. We can say, hey, you know what? If any moment that comes up next time, I know that I can act in the right way. I know that I will act with with temperance. I won't go overboard too much and I won't go you know, uh, under the, the, uh, the medium too much because I know that I'm going to try to act in that balance. And that can give us confidence to, to proceed in life. And I think that is one of those important aspects as well, to have confidence, right? To be sure of ourselves, to feel that we are in control. Um, and that kind of, we talked about control in a previous episode, and that kind of gives us that sense of, of, of owning life, right? Of being in charge of life, of, of being on top of it. And for me, that is one of those things that's empowering. And then bringing it back to what you said, which is really important, that having that inner peace, right? Making sure that you have that inner peace for a longer term, right? 
I don't know if you if you agree with that. You know the the aspect of long term and short term impacts on um, on how you live your life. Absolutely. I mean, I had that down in my notes as well. And and there's a look. There's a long term price to pay for indulgence, right? In the short term, you may get something out of it for sure. But think about the word balance, right? If I'm out of balance, what happens? I fall down, right? So if you keep falling down over and over again, you're going to get injured. And I think that's that's a good way to look about look at it is when we, when we think about the word balance. That's my favorite word for temperance. Think about falling down, right? When you're out of balance, can you can you really be happy? Can you really have this peaceful, tranquil, tranquil life if you, if it's always up and down and things are always chaotic? And I don't think you can. And that word that Stoics use is eudaimonia. Right, it's a Latin word, and it's it's not so much a high, right? Like we, we when we talk about indulgences, I can get a high from eating a, a lot of like rich and sweet foods, or drinking a lot, or indulging in uh, sexual behaviors and things like that, right? There there's some sort of immediate payoff, kind of a crescendo that uh, you, you know you're chasing, and but what happens, right? That comes down. And then where do you go from there, right? There's fallout from there and continually doing those patterns isn't good, right? So, so eudaimonia, this kind of this, this long-term joy, and I like to use that word, and that was, uh, you know, brought up in a different Stoic conversation I had, it's the difference between joy and some sort of pleasure, right? It's, they're not the same, right? Or even, uh, you know, happiness is not necessarily pleasure, or, or, or some sort of big rewarding payout where you get a, you know, you're all, you're all worked up. Happiness and joy are similar into that's, that's a long-term process, right? And you, we've talked about this in, in other conversations, the, that phrase happiness, is, it's not a destination. You're not looking necessarily for an outcome. It's a long journey, right? It's, it's a longer process, but that you're making incremental gains. So my happiness is really a process of constantly moving forward, constantly making small games, gains, I'm sorry, against uh, not just one goals, you'll have many goals. And so things, and, and we talk about uh, temperance, right? There's many things in your life that you're going to uh, have access to or be tempted by that it, it's okay, right? Eating is not bad in, in and of itself. I could even say alcohol here we go in moderation again. It's not necessarily bad. There could be good health benefits to that. So you can enjoy all the things that in life has to offer, but you just have to have a reason and a logic about it. And that's why you know you know temperance is important because it helps us to live in accordance with nature. And that's something that Stoics always talk about. And and here's another idea I like about temperance is. You know, Stokes always believed that nature is really kind of a, it's rational and it's ordered, you know, and Cicero talks about this and Cicero wasn't a Stoic, but he was an important statesman. He kind of used Stoic concepts in his own uh, philosophy, important person in history. And so he, he actually leaned on a lot of core Stoic philosophy, but, but twisted it a little bit sometimes. But he thought of temperance as, I love this, as organization and harmony, right? Does, isn't that a different way? of looking at the word from a stoic perspective is I want to be in, in accordance with nature. I want to be perfectly where I should be in that happy middle in that mean, that joy, kind of that slow burn, that slow happiness, just by how, you know, doing the right thing. I'm in charge. You know, we always talk about uh, certain authors and, and, and other conversations that we like to bring up in books and, uh, you know, Jonathan Haidt, who wrote The Righteous Mind, talked about this concept of the rider of the elephant. I always love that. And it's like, it, it's being that confident rider on the elephant. I'm in charge of this big, powerful thing. It's not, you know, it, it can get very much out of control if I let it. And these are our desires and our impulses, et cetera. But, but you have the reins. You have the high ground in, in that feeling, that joy that, hey, I can enjoy these things on my terms. It's not going to get the best of me. And, and, I, and I can, you know, move forward. And, and have all these things in my life, and it's up to me. I don't know what else you think about that. No, uh, I, I think that's great. And just to add to it as well, uh, it, all, all of this starts with with knowing ourselves, right? When you mentioned some things like, you know, for example, with alcohol and 
Um, you know, that, that it could be good in moderation. Well, f- for some people it can, but if you know for yourself, like for example, for me, that it doesn't, you know, I, I know that my limit is, is usually one drink, you know, well, usually it is. And if I drink more than the, the chances are extremely high that I'm going to get overboard, right? That I lose that self-control, but I know that of myself. So I set my limit at, at zero because that's what I, you know, that's my kind of safe zone. And that's something that I'm, I'm perfectly happy with to live. And to be honest, I wouldn't I wouldn't go back uh, at all um, now that I've experienced this. But that's something that I know for myself, right? I know what my reaction is. I know where my weaknesses lie, where my where my um, um, indulgences are. And that's something that I've got to work on. And maybe, you know, in the future, there's, there's a different situation. But for the moment, th- th- this is how I know myself. So when we talk about this balance, right, when you say, living in accordance with nature or being at harmony it all starts with understanding who you are and that's why i liked how you use the process right temperance is more of a process than the other virtues right with wisdom is something we use in the moment uh, courage the same right we need that in the moment and and justice uh, as well right we need that fairness but with temperance we can build on it right we can create those habits we can make it into our uh, daily routines um, and we we obviously apply it in the moment, but that comes more with some practice, right? The way I see it, we, we've we learned and understood who we are. I know exactly um, what I have to pay attention towards. And if we do so, um, and you know, you mentioned Jonathan Heights, and if we think about another book, Thinking Fast and Slow, um, where we have the mind one and the mind two, the, that's where we can, by practice, by practicing temperance, we can make those decisions that we have to make sometimes in the moment whether i'm going to do this i'm going to you know take this food i'm going to have this drink whether we whether we do it or not that's something that we happens in the moments but if we practice temperance we can give us the pause see what's going to happen and this is a technique that i use right if i uh, if i'm surrounded with with friends or family who do drink i picture myself after a few drinks the day after how do i feel and that little moment gives me pause and by practicing that over and over again I can then use it quicker, right? I can use it faster in a moment. So that's something that I use as a, you know, as a technique, just just to put it out there. But uh, I think that that's all where it starts, right? We cannot be in balance. We cannot live in harmony or in nature, uh, accordance with nature, if we don't know who we are. And that's why I kind of, you know, I was thinking uh, about another question just in the middle of here. I wanted to ask you, like, why do you think then that virtue, of that temperance, is a virtue, right? Why is it part of the four? Of the wisdom, justice, and courage. What do you think about that, Bryce? Why is your, um, why is it part of those four uh, cardinal virtues? Well, I like again, I like what Cicero had to say about it. And that's why I highlight it. You know, it's about harmony, right? It, it's it, it's being in ba- in total balance, in total control. It's where I should be. You know, when I'm living up to my personal nature, I'm living to my highest sense of self. Right now, Stoics talk about the universal nature, which is physics. And then basically, and then your, your your personal nature is really an ethical domain. And I think, can you really be ethical at all? Can you can you can you live up to any of the virtues? And just forget about the four cardinal virtues. Any of these good things, these this moral high ground, if you're out of balance, it, it, it's definitely part of the control mechanism. And I love what you said too about your personal story, right? And in in Benny's case, Benny's balance is a zero threshold on on alcohol. Right. So he's so he's really practicing balance by not taking in any at all. I think that's that's a a great point of knowing yourself. Right. And so this plays into the whole balance sequence as well as I have to know myself. Let's say if I had trouble uh, with food or or let's say, okay, here's another one that's very common. People with gambling, right? Gambling becomes an addiction. It becomes out of control. If you realize that you're a person who has addictive tendencies towards certain things, the only way that you're going to have balance in any of any other parts of your life is maybe by not doing that one thing at all. So it's a collective, right? It's the, it's the collective of everything. And there's interdependencies between, you know, some of these things that we have interactions with. So I, I, I again, I love how Cicero put it. It's being in harmony. And Stokes are always talking about being one with nature kind of being not so much I'm out in the field with the birds eating bark off the trees and things like that. A lot of times people think that or I'm eating healthy foods. No, no, no. It's not really about that. It's it's an ethical question. 
and and that I have reason and logic and I have uh, morals, right? And I have, uh, we have things called values and virtues. This is a byproduct really of having that higher brain of that, you know, that, that to play the logos, that, that pure logic and reason, you know, there's uh, virtues live in there, right? It's, it's that process that we can think these things through and choose things just because it's a good thing to do or the right thing to do rather than just being at, you know, just feeding our impulses and our appetites at all the time, all the time, much like, you know, animals do. So I think it's really important because of that. Yeah, and, and and so if I hear you correctly, it's also not just sitting under a tree eating an apple, right? As I love to do. Yeah, that. that's what Benny does. Yeah, he has his backpack and his wooden shoes out there, and uh, you know, in the Netherlands, walking around, he finds a good spot under the tree and eats the apple and stares at the sky and writes in his journal. Maybe plays a couple of tunes on his flute and, and kind of walks 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 around. I always tease Benny about that. It's fun, but uh, you know, because that's kind of a thing uh, people think about philosophy and your that it's it's esoteric and just uh kind of hands off and, and sometimes even silly but it's not i mean especially with stoic philosophy and that's why i mean benny started this podcast really is because there's good fundamental pragmatic practical things that we can do in our lives to to make our life more valuable you know hands-on getting out there and doing stuff not just not just pontificating about things but actually doing some work and getting some results right and and uh, yeah, but that's just a little sight thing. I like to tease Benny about. Hey, he, he's like, educated me that the wooden shoes do have value, so I might get me a pair for Christmas. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, they do. You know, they do the ancient Crocs. But uh, no, it's uh, th- those are good points, and 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 I agree. You know, this is the living in accordance with nature. It, it is it is a it is a complex uh, thing, right? It's your own personal nature, the bigger nature at whole. But I love that idea of harmony, right? Because if we if we look at uh, what nature is in its core, we look at the logos, that's the pure rational, pure reason and logic, right? And if something is pure reason and logic, that's also unbalanced. And then when we look at uh, the the belief that uh, the world or the universe is deterministic, you know, cause and effect, even that is unbalanced, right? If there is a cause, there is a, there's a, the, a similar effect. Um, and I think that that is a, a good concept to understand, even as we look at ourselves, right? If we say, hey, you know what, this is this is what's happening. You know, these are my actions. These are the things that I'm, I'm causing and the effect that it has on me. And then we can ask ourselves that question. But, uh, you know, if we say what when we talk about temperance and you gave some good examples, but people can say, hey, but this is good. I like it. You know, for example, with with exercises. Hey, you know, I love going to the gym every day for like 10 hours or I'm just exaggerating here. But. People could say, people could say that, but you could also ask yourself, okay, but well, listen to your you listen to your body, listen to yourself. How long are you going to keep doing this? Can you do it consistently? Um, is this maybe having some kind of damage in the long run? Have you done your research on how well you should do it? Do you need to take some rest, right? Because that, from from my experience with exercises, with exercising, rest is just as important as the um, as doing the the uh, training itself. So I think that that is where it's important to think. Like people might seem like, oh, this is this what I'm doing. It, it's not bad, you know. It's not bad for me. It's okay. It's good. But then ask yourself, really, is it good? How do you feel about it? For example, you know, with eating as well, or with with other activities that you do, you've got to be really critical of yourself and have that um, open mind to be reflective, right? Because I think people can get stuck in certain habits with the feeling that, oh, this is okay. You know, this is fine and I'm, I'm doing okay and then maybe having those momentarily joys that um, confirm those feelings but then other moments where they feel uh, bad you know where they feel sad or where they feel, don't feel good about themselves that's those moments where you say hey wait a minute I'm lacking that balance right that's why I love that word balance as well when we talk about moderation and, and self-control because that is the result of it right that is the result of this uh, um, of this virtue and that's why I think it is one one of the virtues, right? Temperance, because it leads to balance, right? It's that activity, it's that uh, that active part of life where we say, okay, I know myself. These are the things that I've got to take care of. This is where I've got to look after, and that's why I think it's so key in in our lives. And I think actually one of the virtues that most people struggle with now, right? If we look at our modern day way of living, we have all the abundance of things around us. You know, we have 
these devices in the palm of our hands with a click on the button we can have all the food we want all the activity all the products that we want uh, we can go anywhere we have everything just at the push of a button and if sometimes we read certain stories from back in the day from you know the ancient texts that this was only available to certain people right to certain uh, tyrants back in the day the emperors right and and they were struggling with it we can only have a you know, in the Roman days, there were five good emperors, and one of them was Marcus Aurelius. And we can still still see in his meditations how he was struggling w- with all of this, right? How he was, just, how he had to keep um, his control uh, 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 at the top of his mind, all the things, because he had everything at the snap of a finger. And the thing is that we have that now, right? We are living, at least in certain uh, er- parts of the world, you know, not everywhere, but most people, a lot of people in the and the and uh, in, in the world at the moment, they have everything at the snap of a finger. They live like emperors, but the only problem is that we don't have that self control, or at least a lot of them lack it, to make sure that we use it in the right way. Because we can, you know, uh, we talk about the preferred indifferences all the time. We can use it. Why not? You know, if if it's if it's there and you can you you can do it in moderation, go ahead, use it. There's nothing wrong with it. But that's the problem. The problem lies in, in not being able to control yourself while doing so, right? And the temptations are everywhere. We look at um, commercials, at, uh, at uh, all the inputs that we get from how other people live. That is something that can take us out of that harmony, from that balance where we say, okay, I'm content with what I have right now. But no, those those inputs, they tell us we want more. We always want more. And I think that that is why a tem- a temperance is one of those virtues that in our modern day um, living is key, right? It's one of the things that we struggle with the most. Uh, I don't know how you see that, uh, Bryce. For sure. And, and you know, I was thinking and I jotted down on my trusty whiteboard. I got whiteboards all over the place and thought, thought comes into mind is, you know, think about it. You know, when we think about virtue, what's the opposite of virtue is a vice, right? So what's the control mechanism between virtue and vice many times has got to be your it's temperance. And I could even say that between good actions and sin, if you want to look at it from kind of a religious way, often sin is just the manipulation of something that's already good, right? You're or you're overextending it. You're using it something that's natural for something that's unnatural, usually unnatural for pleasure or some other type of gain. So it's really that control mechanism is everything. And Benny made a great point too about how easy it is today in today's world to be out of balance. We, it's absolutely true. We live like kings of old, and this is just the common person now. So it is, it is so easy for me to give in and, and incite my uh, my pleasure centers and just hit, get these hits of dopamine and just constantly have my brain wired and and excited all the time. It's so easy. You're literally clicks away. Uh, from doing this. Anybody has a- things we have access to now people never had access to. So it's probably even more challenging to be the virtuous person, the ethical person, you know, to live to my highest sense of st- self, that stoic nature today than even it was back, you know, thousands of years ago. And I wanted to put out a few quotes out there too, you know, the, of the, you know, the key stoics, a few, a few quick ones that have to do with temperance. You know, Seneca, uh, you know, we're talking about, he talks about another good thing that's a sidebar conversation of want versus need, right? Because that's where we get into this, we get out of balance again, right? It's, so, so you really have to do the self-assessment is, do I need this thing that I'm craving or desiring or do I just want it, right? And so sometimes you you need and want the same things, but there's that control mechanism, that slider again, right? So Seneca says, the greatest wealth is to live content with little. And that's exactly what he's talking about there. That's a want versus need question, right? Uh, Masonius Rufus says the greatest victory is that over oneself, right? So he, we, we see these struggles, even though this is thousands of years ago, and, and we do live differently now, and it is easier for us to get out of balance. So these same, same core temptations that are gnawing at us throughout time. And so even back then, you know, it was, it's hard to get victory over oneself. And that's, that's what he's saying. Marcus Aurelius said the only way to conquer pleasure is is uh, by abstaining from it. And again, that sounds very <laughs> defeating because like, yeah, I like pleasure. And, and and again, he's not saying there that you shouldn't shouldn't have any pleasure or enjoy it. But at you know, like when Benny brings up his his story about drinking, 
it's like he knows that there's some joy in that or how he's going to respond to it. In his particular case, he just needs to abstain from that particular thing completely. But that's, that's he's conquering. He's conquering something there and, and creating balance in the rest of his life, which is exactly what you should do. It's very respectable. And I like what Epictetus said about it. The last quote I'll mention, he says, the temperate man is not one who never feels pleasure, but one who never feels pleasure that it's beyond his control. Right? So again, it's, it's go out and enjoy. You know, we have desires and needs and appetites, things for reason, right? These aren't bad things in and of themselves. What becomes a perversion is when we, we don't have temperance. It gets out of balance and it starts making everything else wobbly in our lives. And, and again, I love that word balance because when you're out of balance, what you, what do you do? You fall. And we have so many things in parallel in our lives that we're trying to manage, if one thing gets out of balance, it can start making the other things out of balance. Think about plates spinning on a on a reed or something like that, right? When one starts to get wobbly, maybe it touches the one next to it and then touches the one next to that. So if we're not really mindful of what's happening in the in the moment and in, in, in understanding the relationships between these things, our whole life can go completely haywire for just having one particular thing that's really out of balance. So, I mean, I like those quotes and I don't know what else, what you thought about that, Benny. Yeah, lovely quotes. And, and they, they speak right at the core of the matter, right? Especially the one from Seneca where he says like, you know, to be content with little, but that's the real wealth is, right? And, and, and that's what it is, right? And, but we also have to remember that we shouldn't deprive ourselves of things that we really, you know, need uh, to survive, right? The, a lot of people, they say, um, you know, with food, for example, they, they want to withhold themselves from eating certain things because that's, you know, maybe something that they feel they should or societies put onto them. And so we have that, the needle can also go to the other side. So I, I agree, you know, we have to know exactly where that balance is. But if we do, and if we really work on it, and as you said, it is work, right? It, it is, I think, you know, one of the more active virtues that we can apply onto our own lives on a daily basis, because if you, it depends on what your, your, where your weaknesses lie, you know, that's something that you've got to work on all the time. But once we do, and once we really eliminate all the excess, all the things that are, um, you know, the, the preferred indifferences, but even, even, you know, a little bit beyond, you know, where it's really get excesses, uh, excesses, yeah, where, where they become excesses, that's where, um, that's when we can start to really be grateful for the things that we have right now. And that's a, a, that's a, that is another thing that I think will help us if we want to live a more moderate or temperate life is by really being aware of what we have right now and appreciating it. Because a lot of the time when you were talking about the wants and the needs, you know, and, and Epictetus talks about that as well. We can read that in Arian's handbook. Um, I think it's his, the second entry where he talks about those wants, needs, and, adver and aversions, right? And, but if we know exactly what we have right now, and if we know that this is sufficient for us to live a life, a happy life, a good life in the moment, then we, we can see those wants as extras. And I like that question, what you said, right? Do I really need this? That, that was one of the questions when, when we grew up, uh, my parents always asked us why we went shopping because, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a, a whole lot of money. So we had to be really picky on, on what we wanted to have so they asked us do you really need it and i still apply that question to my to my own life right now and it helps me right back in the day when i was younger it was a frustrating question but now it's something i do i really need this and for someone who likes to travel i try you know traveling light is the best so you really go down to the to the bare necessities and the the crazy thing is or the interesting thing is that once you do that you realize how little you really need how little you really need to live a good life. And that's something that we've, that I think we've lost. Right. But again, I wanted to uh, touch on that. Well, we, you know, when we talk about self-control, the rest becomes a lot more clearer, right? If we, if we have that self-control, the balance, then we also have a, a lot of extra space, mental space to look around, to see what's going on in the world and look around, to see what's going on in our life and with the people around us. So for me, that adds a lot of uh, gratitude, right? It adds a lot of, appreciation to what life is like so yeah i just wanted to you know add that as well that it, that the results of living a moderate life of being in balance it it allows us to have so much more mental clarity at least that's what's my that's what my experience is with it all right i don't have to worry about 
going to a party and thinking, oh, I hope I'm not going to drink too much. Oh, I hope I'm not going to eat too much. No, I go to a party now and I know exactly what what is going to happen on those fronts. So the rest of my mental capabilities I can spend with, you know, socializing, with talking to people, with enjoying the party, enjoying the music, you know. So, so it adds a lot of room in your life to enjoy what's really going on. And that's where I get that long-term um, the long-term benefits from it, what we talked about at the beginning, right? So, yeah, that's that's something that I wanted to add. Like, if you manage to do it and work hard on it, hey, the the benefits far outweigh, you know, everything that you might have to leave behind. No great points, and you know, when I think of stoicism at the highest level, I think of self mastery, right? And I and I think of not being a slave to anything. And I think that's what they're preaching with temperance, right? Is all things are on the table. You know, if I'm going to be the sage, I'm unshakable. Why am I unshakable? Is because, again, I'm a slave to nothing. That these things exist and I can participate them in them or not. Like Benny, again, bringing up his situation, is he was able to identify a trigger and develop strategy for dealing with it, right? And we may have others. And so that's that's one of the positive benefits from it. And I think I want to end my part in saying that, you know, I brought up how it's not sexy and temperance and being restrained and restricted and, and you know, pulling back and, okay, that's too much. It seems so unfun and, and defeating in a sense, right? Because you were constantly fighting this internally. But there are benefits, right? So I think about... Things like, you know, I can have reduced stress, stress and anxiety, right? I can have uh, a less complicated life because I'm not a slave to these vices that are a byproduct of my wants being out of balance with my needs and, you know, me indulging in such things. And so another side effect from that is, right, I'm, I'm going to have improved physical health, improved med- uh, mental health. I'm probably going to have stronger relationships too, right? Because you can get out of balance with lots of things having to do with relationships. So I have a greater sense of self-awareness, of course, the self-control, and that adds more, uh, you know, meaning to my life, you know, this being in touch with nature, this uh, eudaimonia, this, again, this harmony that Cicero talks about, right, is, is there, is there, and temperance is that key. And so I think, you know, if we're inter- interested in cultivating temperance, you know, you have to be aware. That's what Benny was talking about before, too, is I need to know what my thoughts are, what my emotions are, what my desires are. And they're different for different people. So these triggers are going to be different. Therefore, your countermeasures are going to be different. But the end result should be the same, that you should have this balance. Why are we in balance so we don't fall down? It's Again, it's something that where one bad part of your life can affect everything else. So we have to be on guard. Right. This is that duty that Benny likes to talk about in other conversations that we have. And that's stoicism is uh, is very. We have to has the best way to put it is we have to be mindful of ourselves constantly. We're always on guard and aware and it, it takes discipline. And that's why some people get turned off about it. They feel, oh, I failed, you know, and then, you know, why keep doing it? It's not about failing in the moment. It's about trying to be better over time. That's that joy that we're talking about. The stoic sage maybe has never existed truly in any one individual person, but trying to be better every day, that's the story of humanity. That's evolution at, in, in its most core way. And so that's that's the strength that I find in stoicism and, and particularly in temperance and how important it was to, you know, have this conversation and impl- and point that out, that it's something that, that kind of gets forgotten about when you think of the four cardinal virtues. It's kind of that one off to the side. But how important it is that we have this, this balance, this uh, self-restraint, this harmony in our lives. It's, it's really everything. Yeah, exactly. And, and, I, and just to quickly maybe, you know, shift the gears a little bit here at the end, because it, it doesn't always have to be as strict, right? We can also find it uh, as a nice uh, adventure or experiment or exploration into the self that we're going on, right? We can we can experiment. We can we can try different things. We can learn more about ourselves by uh, um, by applying it in different ways. And one of the techniques we've we've mentioned a few times, you know, we can journal. We can we can see how different. 
um, inputs or um, or activities uh, affect us. That's something that we can look at, right? We can, and then we can just keep a journal. We can say, hey, you know, how did it affect me? Like, I'm not the one, and I, and I know from from what Bryce has told before that you know, journaling isn't my uh, my strongest suit, but I've done it. I've tried it, and so and it works sometimes. And you really have that chance, that moment to reflect on it, but. It doesn't always have to be this, you know, the stark with discipline. I think we could also try to get, you know, the joy out of it, out of the progress, out of the process. That's, you know, what we talk about. Enjoy that part. And we can make it fun. We can make it good, right? And and especially when when Bryce said that sometimes we have that feeling of failure. Well, you know, laugh at it. I have failed, you know, but I'm still here and I can try it again. And I know what doesn't work. You know, all that is also really valid information that we know about ourselves. If we know what doesn't work, what isn't good for me, we don't always have to go and look for that right thing, that one thing that really makes it all fit and brings it in balance. Hey, sometimes we we might wobble a little bit, but that's information that we can use and make it fun. You know, look into that and and not just fun, but make yourself curious and open mind and want to learn more about yourself. That's where we can really get the power out of it, the energy and. And make it sound, uh, make it sound some like a journey that we really want to go on. Why? Because that is up to that is our journey, right? It's and at the end of the line is is us, right? We are there. If we find if we walk that journey with an open mind, we'll find ourselves, and we'll know so much more about ourselves. So yeah, it is hard work. It is a lot of discipline. It's not always fun, but we can make it more interesting by just looking at it as a as a puzzle. From ourselves and will be the end result of it. So, I just wanted to add that as well. You know, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a of a of a lighter spark. But I, I agree with Bryce said. You know, it is it is really key to find that balance. And at the end of the day, you know, you can sit under a tree eating an apple, um, you know, keeping it keeping it in, in temperance, but enjoying the world around you. Because why? Because you are at peace, right? Because you are at balance and at harmony with yourself. And that has been a that might have been a very long journey with a lot of painstaking. Um, um, experiments or activities that you've had to go through and lessons you had to learn. But at the end of the day, that's where you are and you can now enjoy it, right? And also you can really uh, pick the fruits of your labor. Yeah, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm really fired up to get out there and practice some self-restraint now. So uh, I'm going to go get busy on that. Great conversation and uh, look forward to the next one. Yeah, perfect. Me too. I'm going to get uh, practicing with uh, my next cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do it. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and leaving a review. Your feedback helps us reach more like-minded listeners on this journey of self-improvement. And remember, you can reach us on X, at Bryce at Stoic Bryce, Benny at The Stoic Padawan, or look at our website, streetstoics.com. If you want to get in touch with us, email us at streetstoics at gmail.com. And remember, virtue is the only good.